live. Consider the function f of x here. Um, got to insert a graph page. Document. Insert. Graphs. Type in uh, 2x plus 3 uh, divided by x plus 4. And you'll see that there's a terrible mistake here because we haven't put this as a fraction. It will take just the 3 and divide it by x. It won't do this full fraction over here. So you've got two choices. Either put the brackets round or use the fraction button. So brackets round or the fraction button. And you see this crazy thing. And you're wondering what the heck is going on. And that's fine. But I'm going to adjust the scale here. Double click. I'm going to go negative 20 for no reason. And I just want to see a little bit more detail what's going on. Okay. Seems to be something missing for this part of the graph. And that is true. Because if you go back to the function here, the funny thing is that imagine you put x equals negative 4 in here. Then you've got negative 4 plus 4 is 0. And anything divided by 0 is undefined. To confirm that, go uh, control T. We can toggle to the table of values. And as I scroll up and down the table of values, you find that when x is negative 4, the function is undefined. As in the output, the y value is undefined. It doesn't exist. So technically what we have here is an asymptote. x equals negative 4 is an asymptote. You would draw that on your graph by having a dotted line on x equals negative 4, vertical line. Okay, But there's also another asymptote because as you go back to the graph, control T to toggle it back off again, you can see this seems to be heading up towards a specific height um, and this seems to be heading down to a specific height. And we can kind of find out that height in two ways. Look at the function itself. If x is a very big number, just feed it into the function. 2 times a million plus 3 divided by a million plus four. This is about two million divided by one million. It's two. Confirm, control, T, and just go ahead and fill your boots. Get all the way down there. So I'm now on x equals 1,828. The y value is 1.99727. Y equals two is a horizontal asymptote. You would sketch that with a dashed dotted line on your axes as well. Let's go back, control, T, take it off. Okay, there are two important points here. I'm going to zoom in on them. Menu, window zoom. My favorite zoom is zoom box. If you do window settings, you can manually set X and Y, but zoom box is beautiful. Click, drag, click. Now you're just zooming in on some of the fine detail. Okay, so here I can see there's a, a Y intercept and an X intercept. Okay, the Y intercept we can find very easily by substituting X equals zero into the original function. So if we put zero into here, this is two times zero plus three is three, zero plus four is four. This value here in section point is three quarters. This one here, we actually make Y value zero, zero here, solve the equation or menu, analyze graph, zero, search between two points, and there's the coordinates of the zero. X is negative 1.5. Also, one nice cool thing is menu, trace, graph trace. As you move with your cursor right and left, you can see the y intercept already, zero, 0 0.75, because this point locks into the interesting features of the function. It's not always guaranteed to work depending on the way you've got your scale. If I move it along now, let's see if it locks in on the zero. So it's locked in on the zero and it's identified it here as well. Okay. So what else do we need to do with this graph? That's pretty much it for the sketch. Okay. Let's go on to the next part. The equation of the vertical asymptote, x equals negative 4. On the same diagram, sketch g of x equals x plus 5. Control g is a shortcut to the um, graph entry. Uh, what was 0.5x? Is that right? Oh, x plus 0 0.5. x plus 0 0.5. Beautiful. Okay, and I've zoomed in on probably the right parts. Using your GDC, write down the coordinates of the points of intersection. Answers correct to 5dp. Okay, should be around to 5dp. Let's see what the calculator does. Menu, analyze graph. Intersections, you can only do one at once. So search for the upper intersection. And, ooh, that's sneaky, isn't it? Look, 
look at the accuracy here. That's not much good. So let's go see if we can change the accuracy here. Document settings. Fix 5. Well, I'll try and increase it to fix 10. Make default. OK. But the problem is any point of intersection is naturally defaulted to actually three sig figs or three decimal places. Um, if you found a way around that, that's fantastic. There is a way around it because we want to know when g of x equals f of x. So we can go document, insert, calculator page, and we can use our wonderful menu, algebra, numerical solve. So we want to solve... Um, oh, this might work. I've not tried this before. We want to solve f1 of x. Oh, this is cool. This is going to work. Is equal to f2 of x. We want to solve, comma, for x. Let's see if it works. Oh, okay, great. We found the x coordinate here, 0 0.350781. So that's one of the coordinates. So that's pretty cool. But how do we find the other one? I think we can actually, and you might have to do a bit of research for this, if I bring nsolve down again, you can actually search between certain bounds. If I search between negative 5, I'm not sure if this is the way to do it, so research needed, less than x, less than 0, so search between those, and enter, invalid bounds. So I have to find a way to search between certain bounds, but it looks like we can do it. I'll leave you to research that. Next one. Write down the grain of line g of x equals x plus 0.5, y equals mx plus c, gradient is 1. The line L passes through the point with coordinates negative 2, negative 3, and is perpendicular to g of x. Find the equation of L. So this is a bit sneaky. We, we know it's y equals mx plus c for here. We know the gradient here is 1, so the line perpendicular to this must be negative 1. So here we know y equals 1x. So that should be enough to actually use y equals mx plus c and substitute negative 2 and negative 3 in. Um, there's a couple of extra features on this I want to show you. Um, if I have a look at the blue function and just zoom back out again, negative 10, 10, if I actually am going to get rid of this graph, so the extra feature isn't relevant to this question, but other questions it is. If you actually go to menu now, analyze graph, and type in dy by dx, you get the gradient of the function at any point along it. If you want the gradient at a specific point, maybe x equals 2, just literally type in 2, and it opens up in a box here, press return, and that is the gradient when x equals 2. The problem is when we move this point, we don't know what the x-coordinate is. We have a fix for that. Menu, actions, coordinates and equations. This is the magic button. Click on the coordinates equations, click on the point, and press one more time. And as I press escape to take off that tool, as I grab this point, I can now see the coordinates of it. If I want to change this point to have a coordinate of, let's say, x equals 3, I can double-click on the x-coordinate and type in 3, and it will automatically give me the y-coordinate and the gradient at that point. It's a very cool feature. And now let's add an extra dimension. Let's find the tangent line to the function when x equals 3. Menu, geometry, points and lines, and there's the magic button tangent. So we want a tangent on this particular point here, because we've already identified it. If we tangent to the graph, and that is it, we can press escape. Grab the little point now. Oh, press escape. Okay, we press escape. And it gives you the equation of the tangent automatically. You can move the point along, and the equation changes for tangent is very very cool and the x and y coordinates are there as well if you actually want to construct a perpendicular now to that point you can do it menu geometry 
and the language I used was construct a perpendicular. Construction, and here is perpendicular. So we have to tell it where the perpendicular is. So point to the actual point where the tangent goes through, click, and point to the line, and you've done it. Press escape, and as I grab and move this point around, look, we've got the tangent and the perpendicular. That's too cool. If I grab the end points of the arrows, I can extend the tangent, and now I can just move it around, which is very cool. I think if I click on the line, I think, oh no, it won't let me extend the, oh, it will, it'll let me extend the perpendicular line as well, which is very cool. And I know what you're asking, would it, is it possible to find the equation of that perpendicular? And the answer is yes. Menu, actions, coordinates and equations, click on the line, and you have the magic happening one more time. Press escape. Here is a point on the function. Here are the coordinates of the point on the function. Here's the gradient of the function at that point. Therefore, here is the gradient of the tangent, and here's the equation of the tangent, and then the perpendicular here, this is the equation of the perpendicular line. How is this gradient of 0.15 related to the negative 6.59? Do negative 1 divided by 0.15 and you'll get the negative 6.59. Boom!